Hey, this is Pete, or Tension 1913. And Rob. Or your mom's boyfriend. Nice. You went from being stepdad to, like, just boyfriend, and now you're just boyfriend. I'm, I'm segue. Actually, I'm yeah. talking about a different person every time. Oh, okay. I get yeah. you. There's at least four people to watch, right? There's at least 12, I At think. least 12? Yeah. Oh, well, then we got 10 episodes. I'm talking at least 10 out of 12 of you. Yeah. And he's your new dad. Or no, boyfriend. I think you know who you are. You're not your boyfriend, your mom. Anyways, let's yeah. get... This is this is Game of Thrones Review, episode... That's what this is? Yes, it oh, is. I thought about figuring figure out who I'm banging. <laughs> yeah, this is Game of Thrones Review, episode 28, Second Sons. Yes. Now, in this episode, it's a pretty good episode. It, yes, uh, it is. It, uh, it starts off with Arya mm-hmm. and uh, the Hound. And, and, you know, as you remember in the last episode, she got taken by the Hound. Yep. And uh, she tries to kill the Hound. Yeah. With a rock. Yeah. Drop a rock on his head. And he's like, you do that and I'll kill you before you, whatever. And he's, I, I enjoy the repartee. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's like, it's uh, two people that kind of don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. You know, they each have a goal. Yeah. But they don't care how they talk to each other or other people or yeah. in general. It's good stuff. I, yeah. I like their interactions. So they're, they're heading to River Run because there's yeah. going to be a wedding there. Yes, it's, there is. And it's going to be pretty cool. Anyway, he's essentially going to ransom her. Yeah, he basically is, wants to get money. So uh, he can go do whatever so he wants he, to do. Yeah, now that from, he's from the Starks. They all go Lannisters. So then we head over to Danny, and she's talking with, or she sees this group that's, uh, this group of mercenaries in Yunkai called the Second Sons. Yeah. She talks and, like they're captains. Well, she asks, in the beginning, she asked Morma and, and, uh, Selmy if they know, like, who the hell oh, they well, are, and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, they're Second Sons. They're like a mercenary group. They're like one of the best ones around. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, I get a chance to meet these guys. Yeah. So, yeah. She's plotting away this year. Yeah, she's I like very, it. I like how she's uh, doing all that. It's, yeah. It's good because it's like showing that, you know, it's kind of interesting you see in the first season, she's a frail little girl and she's mm-hmm. kind of growing into a ruthless leader at uh-huh. this point. So then we head over to Melisandre who's returning Gendry to Stannis. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she basically is being real nice to him. She is. Because she wants to sacrifice him, and then Stannis is like, if you're going to sacrifice him, why are you being so nice? And then she yeah. just kind of talks about how, like, oh, the lamb's blood. She's like, have you ever seen it slaughtered a lamb or whatever? And he's yeah, like, that's pretty cool. no. And she's like, well, if they see the blade, the blood gets all bad and shit. And yeah. So, And so uh, he's like, oh, all right. So um, yeah. Basically, she's being a creep. Yeah, she's just kind of being a creep. She's kind of like jerking his chain yeah. before she uh, slits his throat, you know what yeah. I mean? So then, you know, Stannis kind of has like a crisis, a comp, what is it, crisis of confidence? Conscience. Conscience. Yeah, anyway, yes. so he goes to see his buddy Davos, yep. who's still in the cell. Yeah. And uh, what ends up happening is he's talking to him and he's t- telling him about Gendry. And Davos is like, man, you know, you know why you came down here. He's like, you don't want to kill the boy, but you, you want, want me to tell him. Yeah. yeah, and so he's, so he's like, I'm, you know, Stannis kind of tells him, you know, I'm not going to kill you. Because Davos mm-hmm. is like, when are you going to get get kill me? You know, yeah. I'm a traitor or whatever. And he's like, I'm not going to kill you. And then, basically, they have their little talk, which was pretty nice. Yeah. So then we go over to um, Danny, who was talking with the uh, the second sons. Right, okay. And here's where we meet, uh, here's where we meet the, act- the actual guys. Yes. The leader of the group, his name is uh, Miro, mm-hmm. or the Titan's Bastard. And he's played by Mark Keeling. Keel... Mm-hmm. Mm, whatever, and he's pretty awesome. I think he's pretty he, awesome. He does play though. a super, super good yeah. butthole. Yeah, he's a big jerk, yeah. and uh, basically he's the most cockiest man I've ever seen. A little bit, and uh, he's just like he's just talking shit to Danny. He grabs yeah. uh, Mel, uh, Mel, what's her name, Melisandre's butt. Mes- yeah, me- no, uh, Messende. She's yeah. got a hard name to pronounce. Yeah. Anyway, she grabs Sandre her butt. Me. He's just messing around with him. He's yeah. like, he's like, because Danny's trying to get persuade them to be on the, right. their side. And so they meet another guy, uh, Prendall, who's played by Raymond uh, Titteram. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he and he's like he's second like a, in command. Yeah. He's not as important. He's kind of like more, I like think of him like, yeah, it's kind of like a voice of reason, like, you know, Miro is oh, a yeah. big brass bastard. He, and then yeah, he have, does seem to steer the conversation towards, towards facts. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. And then finally we have uh, Dario Naharis. Bit of a wild card. Though. Yeah, he's a little wild card, and he's played right. by Ed Screen. And, um, yeah, he's a pretty cool guy, kind of, you can kind of see that, like, him and Danny have, like, a... 
a oh, little thing. Like, eyes, just, just the eyes way, fucking a little bit. Yeah, just the way that yeah. they look at each other. Yeah, they're like, fucking okay. a little bit. And so they're talking about joining, and then mm-hmm. basically Danny says, I'll give you 24 hours to figure out if you're going right. to join my thing or are you all going to die. So he's like, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm out of here, you know. And so they leave. And uh, at this point, uh, Dario and... Uh, and, and uh, Prendall and Miro are talking to each other while this beautiful whore is walking <laughs> around. And uh, he says, you know what we're going to do? We're going to assassinate that bitch. And so what they do is they each take a coin. Whoever had, I think it was the Bravos coin, yep. was going to assassinate him. So then Dario gets the coin and he's like, okay, I got a killer. And he's like, Valor uh, Mogules or something like yes. that. Mogules or whatever. It's, and... Uh, and and I thought that was pretty cool. And then we head over to uh, to Tyrion, who was a pleasure. Yeah, who's talking with Sansa about um, what the hell are they talking about? They're, Tyrion is talking with Sansa. Basically, if you remember in the last episode, he kind of broke, he kind of you know broke uh, you know the news. the news that hey yeah. you're getting married to me, yay! And then he's just kind of trying to tell her you know I know how you feel. Yeah. You know, we're bo- you, you won't That's be a actually pri- a nice exchange. Yeah, he you says, won't be a prisoner. I, I think I know how you feel. And, and then she says, I am pretty sure you do not. Yeah, and then he's like, yeah, you don't know how I feel either. And, and that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Marjorie kind of talks with uh, Cersei. Oh, yeah, then we go to... then Everybody's we, actually entering the wedding. This yeah, time. because they're at the Sept of Baylor and they're, mm-hmm. uh, they go inside. And... Uh, Marjorie's kind of talking with Cersei, saying, "How oh, we're gonna be sisters now." This yeah, Marjorie's all like sunshine and butterflies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but in a weird way that you think is hiding other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Cersei just kind of basically threatens her. Yeah. In the way, in the way that in the beginning she's like, "Oh, do you remember? Do you remember the Castamere? Do you remember mm-hmm. the reigns of Castamere?" And then and she's like, "Oh, well, I kind of remember them." And then she tells the story. Yep. Of the whole of the whole song and whatnot, and how, you know, he tried to rise up and be better than uh, the Lannisters, Tywin, yep. and then he was mocking the Lannisters, and then Tywin just killed his ass, destroyed him, obliterated Everybody. him, obliterated him, family. yeah, and just got rid of him. And she said, "If you ever call my sister again, I'm gonna strangle you in your sleep, or I'm gonna have someone strangle yeah, you in your sleep." Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's pretty effing threatening, don't you think? A little bit. That's yeah, not, uh, that's not subtle. No, it's not. So she's not subtle. No, she's not. A lot. She's. she's she doesn't know how to be subtle. No. So then we have um, basically Joffrey giving away Sansa because because she's yeah. standing there. And she's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Well, your father's dead." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's a real dick in this episode. This kid should get an Emmy just for being a twat. Yeah, and so he grabs her by and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna give you away because the king is the father to everyone or some bullshit mm-hmm. like that." Yeah, yeah. So he gives him away, and you know, you go to the ceremony where, in uh, in Westeros, they've now seen a couple times. Yeah, they put a cloak over the bride, mm-hmm. and Tyrion's trying to do it, and he's just pulling down, and she won't, yes. and she won't come down. Everyone's laughing, and Tywin's just kind of like, "Oh my god, this is this yeah, is a disaster." This is embarrassing. Yeah. And finally, Tywin is easily embarrassed. Yeah, he is. He's, he's very, easily mortified. Yeah, he gets. Mortified. Everybody has a mom that like blushes every time you say hell. That's yeah. Tywin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except he's like... You say suck in front of Grandma, and she's like yeah. pulling you over and giving you a talking to. Mm-hmm. That's Tywin. That's Tywin. I can see that, yeah. Yeah. So, eventually, Sansa does bend down so he can put him on. Mm-hmm. Put her on. But, you know, in, in the book, I remember she was a huge dick about that. She's like, I'm not going to give him... I don't want to oh, do yeah. That. One yeah. difference is uh, Tyrion had one of the guys come over and he stands on his back or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. in the in the show, they just had her kind of like bend down. Mm-hmm. The show makes Sansa a little more nice than the yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Same books, at this point, she's still a little petulant in yeah. the books. It's, it's, yeah. And it's okay, because she's a kid, and mm-hmm. it's all good. But she's still a little more bratty. Yeah, and the same thing with Caitlyn, too. She's a real yes. douche. She's a real douche in the books. I, I, I think she's a little douche in the books, too. Yeah, and this one... That whole story about uh, praying for John to die, and then yeah. he's promising she'll love him, and then not. Yeah. With close to how she... That, that's closer mm-hmm. to how she's in the books for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that made her... I thought that made... Because she never mentioned anything about that in the books. No. It made me feel like, oh, she sort of cared for John for just a moment. You know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? But she couldn't bring herself to actually give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's closer in the books. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And it, then, it, it, it's just a book, the feeling I get for her. Yeah, books, yeah, yeah. That's all. I get you. I get you. Yeah. And so then we go to Gendry yep. and, and Melisandre. And they're Gendry starting, looks all cleaned up. 
Yeah, he gets all cleaned up, and he's having a little bit of wine. Mm-hmm. Alessandro's drinking the wine. They're talking about the 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 uh, god of fire, yes. and then they just start banging, and we get to see, Whoa! and we get to see uh, Melisandre's boobies. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what ends up happening? And Gendry's gizzle, j- chiseled chest. Yes, because he's uh, he's, cut. A, he's a smithy, so he better oh, yeah. be. Anyway, so what ends up happening is she kind of ties him up, gets some leeches, yes. and puts him on there, and he's like, "Oh no!" Mm-hmm. Like at first, I I I've never had been leeched, but like the first two, all right, whatever. Yeah. You're you're a little afraid. But the one on the wiener. All right, now that yeah. a leech on my gonna, cock would be weird. Yeah, and so basically, by the way, way to bring back the only like other crotch leech since Stand by Me, right? Uh, I've never seen Stand by Me. We gotta watch that. Yeah, and you know, so Stand by Me. I've probably seen parts of it. Son of a bitch. Anyway, so uh, what is happening is Stannis comes in and, and Davos, mm-hmm. and they're basically this is a test. Yes. They don't want to kill him; they just want to use his blood because there's you know there's certainly power in it. So what what oh. Stannis does, which I didn't think he was going to do in this season, uh, is he takes the leeches with uh, mm-hmm. uh, the king's the, blood, yep. and he just drops them in this fire, and he's like the usurper Rob Stark. Yeah. And he takes another one, the usurper uh, Balan Greyjoy. And then he's like the usurper Joffrey oh, Baratheon. Boom. The leeches all and shrivel And the leeches up. all shrivel up. And, and then, I guess this is supposed to be like some some sort of magic power. Yeah, for the trying to Yeah. So then yes. we head over to uh, the wedding of Tyrion and Sansa, already yes. in progress as they just got married. The reception, more like. Yeah, the reception. Yep. And he's drinking and dancing. Yeah, Tyrion is quite drunk. And he's just, drunk. And he's just talking about how drunk he is. And mm-hmm. then we go over to the Tyrells, and, and, and Alina's trying to figure out after Joffrey, after he, she's, he, she's like, like, okay. Tree. Yeah, she's like, okay, Marjorie is going to be the queen, and then Lancel is going to be, er, I mean, uh, Loras is going to be your nephew, or whatever. And she's just gone, and she's like, this is all way too confusing. <laughs> you know, I thought that was pretty funny. It was a good and then um, comedy moment. Tywin kind kind of comes over to Tyrion and he's like, "Dude, stop getting so drunk. You gotta bang, you gotta bang your wife. Make sure this uh is consummated marriage." Yes. You know what I mean? And he's like, oh, "Like a baby in that Stark." Yeah, and he's like, "I'll do whatever the hell I want. It's my wedding." And then um, and then basically Tyrion kind of, or Tywin walks away in disgust once again. And uh, constantly is. And then Loras. Which I also love. He walks over to Cersei. She's yeah. standing drinking near the window. And he's like, well, my father used to say. And she's like, I don't give a hell what your father said. And he just, <laughs> just walks away from and he's so, And he's like, yeah. oh, God. And I thought that was pretty funny. That was funny. So, and while Sansa gets up to, like, talk to the other people around, Joffrey comes to her and threatens her. Mm. And he kind of basically says, you know, isn't it wonderful that you married a Lannister? You finally married a Lannister. Yeah. And then he's like, maybe I'll come in and... Uh, and and I'm going to away with you anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a creep. What a fucking yeah. creep. Well, he's a creep. And then finally, Tyrion threatens Joffrey with the knife. And I forget what the hell he says, but he's like, I'll, I'll cut, something like, I'll cut off your dick. Almost, yes. Almost in the in that sense. Yeah. And then and then uh, Tywin's like, uh, Tyrion's uh, pretty drunk right now. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of like an episode, you know, where Tywin didn't have any control. You know how he's like yes, the man he's to be usually, feared? usually, yeah. He's the man to be feared, but not in this episode. No, things yeah. kind of start to get away from him. Yeah. Which it's, you can tell he just, it, it fucking eats him alive. Yeah, you know? yeah, oh yeah. So then Tyrion's like, I'm quite drunk, come on Sansa, let's go, let's go to bed. And mm-hmm. they and they go off to bed. And so they're talking in Tyrion's bedroom, and, and she's kind of taking off her and she clothes. Knows, she knows what's expected. Yeah, she knows what's expected, and Tyrion's like, oh my god, I'm drunk. And he kind of has that hint, as they've been trying to hint it throughout the season, like, he would bang her if he could. Oh, yeah. He, if, if she'd been like, all right, I was bang, he'd be yeah, like, oh, would, fuck yeah. Yeah, let's do. But he's kind of like... But he feels bad, yeah. like, making her do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what ends up happening is he says, you don't have to do it. We don't have to do it. He's like, mm-hmm. I'll, we, we can do it when you're ready. He takes the high road. Yeah, and yeah. she says, what if I'm never ready? And then he says... So my watch began. <laughs> my watch <laughs> right yeah, Actually, you know what? I think that's my favorite. Yeah, line. from the Night's Watch. Yeah. He's like, well, then my my Night's Watch begins or whatever. So then she goes to sleep on the bed. He passes out on the ottoman or whatever. Some duvet or something. <laughs> yeah. So then, so then we have uh, Danny who's talking with Melisandre. She's in the in the bathtub, mm-hmm. and they're kind of, they're kind of joking around with how bad her uh, Dothraki is, mm-hmm. and then. And then uh, there's a mysterious uh, Unsullied who comes in. And uh, basically who that was is Dario. Mm-hmm. Naharis coming in to kill Danny. But what ends up happening is uh, basically he gives 
Danny her those uh, what's his name Miro and Prendahal's head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he basically swears his fealty in the second song yeah. to her. And they get kind of like a little look going again. The tent, you can feel like a little bit of sexual tension. Well, she does stand up naked. Yeah, she does. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Shows him the goods. Yeah, she does kind of. Well, I'm going, eh? Yeah. Eh? Eh? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. like what you see? That's right. You like what you see? And he does. And he does. And I think every, most most people do. I think everybody appreciates it. Yeah. Uh, so basically, he says, you know, my heart and the second sons of yours, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then we head back to, uh, and then we head back to, uh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> we head back to, sh- to uh, the morning after the wedding, and Shay comes in and she's all pissed off. Yeah. Because she's like, God, that bastard, he probably fucked her. Mm-hmm. And, and I think Sansa was up already or something. Yeah. And Tyrion was still passed out. And so he wakes up a little bit and she's like shuffling through the clothes and she notices that like the bed isn't all, yeah. what what is it, like the bed isn't like. I don't know. It's not messed up. It's, yeah. There's no blood from the, yeah. the high men or anything. Yeah, anything like that. She so kind of realizes that they didn't, they didn't bang. And she kind of looks over him, and then he looks over, and he's like, yeah. See, I'm a faithful bastard here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she was getting all mad and jealous. Like, she getting a little pissy. Yeah. She was getting pissy for yeah. more. So she was kind of happy, and then she left. And then yeah. we go to the final scene, which was Sam and Gilly. Yes. And they're holding up at this little house yep. uh, in the north there. Way, way past way the, the wall. wall. Yeah. Yep. And, uh. They're just kind of talking about names. They're like, what are you going to name your kid, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Talking about what surnames are, house names, this, that, and the other. Yeah. And she's like, uh, I want to name him Craster. He's like, no, that's your, your dad's name or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then she finally decides, she was thinking about naming him, uh, what the hell was the Sam's dad's name? Randall. Yeah, and he's like, oh, please don't name him Randall. I like that line yeah. a lot, actually. And the, just the way he delivers it shows yeah. you how much... He doesn't like his father. Yeah, and the, and also where they're talking about, um, I also like how he's, what did he say? He said, my dad was mean in other ways. Yes. Like, because they were talking about Craster. Was like, your father cool like Craster? Yeah, yeah. And he said he's he like, cool no. in other ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what ends up happening is they hear a lot of crows outside, tons of crows. So Sam goes Actual out. Actual crows, not, brother, yeah. not brothers of the No, 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 no. And so he goes outside, and... <gasps> Oh my god, there's a ton of crows, and then it gets real cold, and there's a white walker just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. He comes down, and Sam goes to hit him with the sword, and the sword shatters, just like, uh... It was not, yeah, the, the other grabs the sword. Yeah, and it just... And it just shatters. Yeah. And, that was and, a really cool, cool scene. And then, um, what ends up happening is Sam... Like, his Sam with a backhand. Yeah, and Sam falls to the ground. He has no other weapons to use. He takes out the, the obsidian dragon glass knife. Yeah. And stabs him right in the shoulder, thus killing the White Walker. Yes. Which is amazing because now there is a way to defeat him. Yes. But the thing is, Gilly comes running out, and Sam's like, "We gotta get out of here!" Mm-hmm. And they go running away. Yep. Without the dagger, but yeah. I think I think in the book uh, the dagger actually breaks or something. Uh, because if it, it was me, it got very cold too. Yeah. Because yeah. if it was me, I would have kept that damn dagger. Right. But so they ran away, and that was the end of the yeah. scene. That he does was have the a the show. Yeah. He's got that whole collection. Of oh, yeah, yeah, him, yeah, yeah. True, found. very true. I mean, Ed and Gren and him found. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, likes, dislikes about this episode. Rob, what do you think? Uh, I love this stuff, even though it was very short with Sam and Gilly. Yeah. Uh, what I liked was a lot of characters being able to do what they do best. Seriously, just being a fucking cutting little bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyrion, just give Dinklage all kinds of one-liners. Yeah. You, you can't have a bad episode. Really. Yeah. He did a hell of a Ari and the Hound being yeah. snotty but brash to yeah, each other. Yeah, you count like, on more, but you'll, we'll, yeah. maybe we'll see more. That and Tywin not being what he usually is was nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a lot of people swinging in their comfort zone and then throwing him out of it was nice. Yeah. I liked, uh, I think the thing I liked a lot about this episode was probably Tyrion's wedding. Mm-hmm. I liked even though, I mean, he's one of the only people who like him and Tywin at this point, and the only mm-hmm. two people that really stand up to Joffrey. Yes. You know I mean, I really liked how he did that. And he's, yep. and he kind of like, he's trying in his own way to put the kibosh on him messing with Sans anymore. Yes. You know what I mean? I, I, like, I like that. Even though he was he was drunk out of his mind, he was still yeah. trying to do that, which is pretty cool. So, Rob, uh, what was your favorite kill? You got you got three. It's got to be the other. Yeah. Uh, Sam killing the White Walker. Yeah. It was just awesome. Just stabbed right in the shoulder. It was and a good just, scene. Like, it's Sam of all fucking people. Yeah, Sam. And it's something that was really nice to see. It was really yeah, interesting. Yeah, because, you know, it is interesting to see because, like, 
at this point, you don't think that they can be killed. Right. And now we know that there's a that way there to kill them. There is a way at least, yeah. Yeah, I think my favorite deaths would have to be, even though we don't see it, I would have to say Mario and, and Prenda Hall, just because he just takes that bag and just bloop, and then the head just rolls yeah. on the ground and it's like, holy shit. Yeah. So, Rob, uh, uh, favorite line? Uh, it's either Sam with the My Father's Cruel cool in Different Ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what we said earlier about, uh, what the hell did I say? I don't remember I wrote it. Well, you think about that, and I'll tell you what my favorite line yeah. is. It's actually more of a little spiel that Tyrion gives. Yes. Uh, when he when he gets really drunk and he just takes Sansa with him mm-hmm. to leave the wedding because they he's had enough. He says, talking about how they're going to make love right now. He's like, yeah. I vomited on a girl once in the middle of the act. Not proud of it, but I think honesty is important between a man and a wife. Don't you agree? <laughs> Come, I'll tell you all about it. Put you in the mood. Yeah. And <laughs> I thought that was really good. And uh, th- there's other ones, like, I, you know, Tyrion said, I'm the god of tits and wine, because Tywin was kind of busting his balls about all he does is drink and lust yeah. after whores and stuff. So he's like, I'm, then I must be the god of tits and wine. And then, uh, yeah, you know, then you have Stannis and Melisandre both saying in the episode, you know, there's power in King's Blood. Yeah, that's going to be like their new credo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so... It's also how they justify what they're going to try to do with Gendry. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that so. was one of the things... Um, episode, let's see, uh, I think we already talked about the differences from the book. Yeah, we kind of did. I, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, basically, just quick, uh, Dario Naharis in the book, he's like, uh, he's like a, uh, a mercenary of this group called the Storm Crows. Oh, and it's like, yeah, it wasn't really the second time. Well, in the book, there's like a a, dozen names. Yeah, there's a bunch of mercenary troops. Yeah, and so it was like. You know, to consolidate, yeah. they, they just made them all second sons. That's, like, that's quite yeah. okay. With but it's still the, all, basically kind of the, the same yes. the same thing that went down. Um, and that's, that's uh, yeah, I can think of from right off the book yeah, right. in my head. But, yeah, uh, yeah so uh, is there anything else you want to add? Before no, I know it's good. Yeah, so this has been uh, Pete, or Kenshin1913. Rob or Rob. And uh, this has been another Game of Thrones review. Yes, it is. Bye-bye.